of coming in this final generation. And that is to say, as it is written in the great book of Ephesians in the sixth chapter, in the end, we don't stand against the flesh of the arm. It's against principalities in high places, meaning supernatural fallen angels. And there's only one way that you can address something like that, and I'm speaking of being delivered to the false Christ and so forth, is to have the Holy Spirit and God's energy within yourself. He promises that, let's get to it. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, please. And 1 Corinthians chapter 12 reads, Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Now, I want you to note that the word gifts is italic. In other words, it's in italics, meaning man put it there. The subject is things, okay? So you can just, in your mind, it means spiritual things. And it's talking about supernatural things, as it's written in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, okay? That you, you should not be ignorant about those things, okay? Verse 2, you know that you were Gentiles carried away into those dumb idols even as you were led. In other words, there was a time that you kind of didn't know which way to go and you would believe any doctrine that came along wondering, well, is that right or is it not, okay? Verse 3, Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Spirit. Now, this word accursed is anathema. And it means uh, being translated totally as calling him without any spiritual uh, balance or purpose. And certainly any, that's a, that would be a curse to one that would call Christ that, okay, void of, of anything spiritual. For he is, his spirit with the fathers is the, combines the Holy Spirit, God with us. Verse 4. Now, there are diversities of gifts. Now, here we actually have gifts it's in the Scripture, but the same Spirit. In other words, there are different positions and things that God chooses His family for. One has a talent in one thing and another another. But if they don't have something at the base of that, which we'll derive here in a moment, you got nothing. You're just drifting. You've got to have the real thing. Verse 5, And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. There are different administrators, but they all, we only have one God. We only have one Lord. It all comes under Him. Verse 6, And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. Now, this word worketh, you've got to learn in the Greek, okay? It's inner jail, inner jail, okay? Which our word energy comes from. It means that God gives the energy to do these things. That means to be effective, to be successful, to have the, the gift as it comes from God. You must have that energy, and that energy comes from our Father. You, you can recognize it when you see it. You don't have to play guessing games. And when God gives one that energy, that's his working. And let this be a comfort to you. For his energy is present everywhere whereby his children need him. As you're going to find out before we finish this lecture. But here... You have, I, I want to read that again now that we've translated that. There are diversities of operations. That means there, there's different things that must be done. But it is the same God which worketh or energizes all in all. It all comes from Him. Okay. And without that energy, you're not going to get it done. Now, now understand, what, what was that first verse that said, when you stand against supernatural spiritual entities? Okay. 
if you don't have this energy and you don't know how to call on the Father, you're in a heap of hurt, okay? Because you must have his protection in that operation that he would assign you whereby he can utilize you. Some of you have known since you were a child there was more to God's word than you had been taught. And that energy was always there for you. you. You knew it. You could feel it. And that's God's gift. The word gift is charisma. And, and uh, charisma means it's, it's a divine gratuity. Okay, It's divine. In other words, uh, it, it's something God gives you, that, and it's not really yours, and yet it's your gift, but it's yours to use for him. And to take that energy. You know, if, if you have, as this old Marines always say, if, if, if you've got the stuff, if you're a real Marine, you can always make one more hill. Okay, No questions asked. You can always make one more hill. You can do well, so it is with the energy of God. You become a can-do entity for our Father. Why? Because he gives you that above and beyond the call of energy, okay, energy, which makes you effective and active in that position. Whichever position he gives you, and he certainly doesn't give us all the same one, we all have a purpose in God's plan, and he sees to it that you are equipped, if you believe him, with that effectual, active, working energy. Who was it again that, uh, that accomplishes that? Uh, it says, God which worketh, God which energizes. Don't ever forget that. You know, there's sometimes when you get the old self out there and you're right up against the enemy and the old self kind of wonders what's going on. You need that energy. You need him. And then you are effectual. You can cut it. You can get it done. Okay, verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all for the common good of the whole family. I don't care who has what gift. It is not the good for that one individual. It's the good for the entire body of Christ. Okay. Verse 8. For to one is given by the spirit of the word. That to, the word is logos. It means express. Okay. To express the expression of wisdom. And to another, the word or the ability, the energy to express uh, knowledge by the same Spirit. In other words, the same Spirit causes one to be able to express wisdom and another to express knowledge, experience, okay? Father's Word, energy, and they are energized whereby they have what we call it. And when you hear it, you know it. You know that energy of God is present. Verse 9. To another, faith by the same Spirit. All comes from the same place, our Father. To another, the gifts or the charisma of healing by the same Spirit, to that divine gratuity. It is not the person that heals, but it is the person that God touches with that energy. And it draws on that one that took, whose body took the stripes and we get the healing. And they're aware with, of that, familiar with it, and get it done. Okay. And for his own good? No, for the good of the whole community, the whole family. Verse 10, to another, the working, there's that work, there's that word again, a little different, energy, energy. To another, the energy of miracles, that's dunamis. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits, knowing true from false, fake from the real. To another, diverse kinds of tongues, that's languages. And to another, the interpretation of tongues. You know, uh, when you travel abroad, you, you many times will 
it, it, you can't know all languages, so sooner or later you're going to have to have an interpreter. And many might think, well, an interpreter is just somebody that um, uh, just can speak, he's, uh, ha he's multilingual. That's not what an interpreter with God's energy is. For example, you many of you have heard me say this before, I was, I'm going to speak two languages. Jesus is number one. Jesus is uno. Okay. Well, now that's two different languages, but it's the same message. Now, how about if I pick up an interpreter and he says, Jesus is uno. Jesus is number one. That doesn't get it done. Okay. That's not the energy. He's got to come forth with saying, Christ, Yeshua, is number one. And deliver that message. Express it with that energy. Okay. Um, so, and so it is. Well, why, why does it speak of language? Because we're to spread Christianity around the world. That's why. Okay. That's the whole purpose. And, and ultimately, we know when we're dealing with the supernatural that both sons and daughters, as it is written in Acts chapter 2, when you're delivered up before the supernatural, you will speak with the Holy Spirit speaking through you in all the cloven tongue, which means all languages. Man can't interpret that. I mean, man can't cut that. But he can because he has the energy. He's effective in getting it done. Okay. Verse 11, but all these worketh, there's that word again, this energy, that one and the selfsame spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. Uh, you know, you might hear someone say, well, uh, I, I, I'd rather have all the gifts. Well, you know, that would be very rare. If one person had all the gifts, very rare. Why? Right? Because you've got different duties. Okay. Did it not say, to every man severally as he will? That means as God pleases, because he knows what you're capable of. He knows what it is that he wishes you to do, because you do have a destiny. You do have a purpose, and you must understand the energy that comes from him, which enables you. You're helpless without it, really. You will, nobody will listen to you. But with that energy, people will hear. Why? Because you've got the blessings of God upon you. And he loves you. That makes a big difference, to be honest and straightforward with that energy that convinces souls that convinces people, quite frankly, that gets it done. Verse 12, for as the body is one, just as a human body is all one body, and hath many members, you've got arms, legs, and uh, hair, and feet, and so forth, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. That's the makeup of it. It takes us all. That's why if he gives one the gift of a foot, well, what would that be? Uh, traveling, okay? Moving, getting it done. Uh, another arms to get work done, accomplished, to help people, uh, teach, whatever the case may be. The mind, the ears to hear, the mouth to speak. It takes uh, the whole family, okay? Verse 13, for by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, or have been all made to drink unto one spirit. In other words, that one spirit, that Holy Spirit, when you drink in that energy that he gives you, when he's ready for you to accomplish something. You know, I suppose we come here to one of the hardest things for man, things for man to do, and that's to do it at his time. Okay. You know, but I, I want to do it now. Well, he's not ready for you to, okay? There's a time and a place for everything. Everything has its season. And you have to wait and, on him. But arm yourself. Prepare yourself with that energy 
to know when he does instruct you, when it is time, you're ready. You can cut it. Why? Because you are energized with God's spirit to accomplish easily what it is he would have you do. Verse 14, for the body is not one member, but many. It, it takes many members to make up the body of a church, okay? If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Of course it is. It doesn't make any, it doesn't make any less a part of the body or of, of the many-membered body. You know something? Many of you may not totally understand, but in this body, it goes all the way around the world. It goes into millions of homes. It touches hundreds of thousands of hearts. It's a many-membered body. And God, and God alone, gives that energy, even in the easy ways, that gets it done with his blessings and his leading. And it is not just one that does it. That's my point. It's the whole body. It's the whole family that makes it possible that that can go forth. 16, and if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Question, of course it is. Verse 17, if the whole body were an eye, uh, where were the hearing? And if the whole body were hearing, where were the smelling? Now, you know, I suppose the hearing is the, some of the hard, hardest part for a person is to listen. Well, listen to what? Listen to your father. He wrote you this letter telling you how he feels about you, how he wants to energize you if you will allow him to. Uh, it's your choice, okay? If you want to serve him, and he will use you. Fine. He's declared it. Okay. Verse 18. But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. That's something that's difficult for some people. Do you understand that? God has placed everybody where he wants them to please him. But I'd like to have it a little different. Oh, would you? Well, you're probably not a part of the body then, okay? I'll say it again. God has placed everyone exactly where he wants them in the body. And it is a growing process up to that time when the supernatural will appear, not maybe, it's going to. We're going to document it before this lecture is over. Okay. Verse 19, and if they were all one member, if they were all a hand, uh, where were the body? It wouldn't be much use, would it? That's why it takes all of us. You got it? That's simple. Verse 20 to complete. But now are they many members, yet but one body, and that gets it done. Well, what makes the difference if that body is energized that shows and documents the working of Almighty God that gives it that drive, that purpose, most of all that anointing that brings forth that charisma that takes that message and delivers it and ex expressed as it should be. Knowledge and wisdom for men to arm themselves in these end times especially. Let's go to Philippians, if we may, right after the great book of, of Ephesians. Philippians chapter 2. And Philippians chapter 2 reads, If there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, that's to say compassion from right within, 
Um, he said, listen and obey, in other words, quietly. Fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. In other words, get along. Let the body get along. Well, how do we get along? Go by God's word. Be energized. Let God do the energizing. Well, how do I do that? By listening to the expression of his wisdom and his knowledge. Verse 3, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind let each esteem other better than themselves. Oh, if one of your neighbors or somebody in the member um, uh, is blessed, if God blesses them and they have a, let's say, a brand new nice car, okay? You all don't drive fancy ones, so I'm just saying nice, okay? Then be happy for them. If somebody gets a break on a good buy and, man, they bought a nice home and it's, it's really awesome, be happy for them. Don't be envious. You know, you know what helps you a lot in that? It's family. Okay. It's family. God bless his family. What does that mean? Well, sooner or later, he'll get to you. Okay. Look, not every man on his own things, his own interest, in other words, but every man also on the things of others. If you're a part of that body, you're going to be concerned with the whole family and the truth and what's before us. Let this mind... This attitude be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, Emmanuel, God with us, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, uh, he, uh, but, verse 7, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of a man just like any other, just like any other man. I mean, he was flesh. The Word became flesh. The Logos became flesh and walked among us. Why? To teach us, to show us how to get it done, okay? But he wasn't, he, he wasn't prideful about it. He didn't, he didn't lord it over anybody. He showed us the way. Verse 8, And being found in fashion... As a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of, a, of the cross, which is the death of a criminal. Though he never sinned, never committed a crime, never did any harm, but he did that for you. Verse 9, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. Verse 10, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven, of things in earth, and things under the earth. The first day of the millennium, you've got a time clock right there, okay? It's going to happen. And um, he has elevated him to the right hand of God, and there he is until his enemies are made his footstool. Well, how does that enemy get to be the footstool? Because he energizes the many-membered body to get it done. That's how. Verse 11. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wherefore, my brother, my beloved, beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work, that's energize, out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Verse 13, for it is God, here's our, here's our sentence, this is why we came here, for it is God which worketh in you, that's energeo, it is God that energizes you within you. And um, uh, the, both, what? What does he energize in you? Both to will and to do of his good pleasure. That's what he does. That's God's way of acting. Okay. He energizes you to the point that you have the will and the way. Do you know something? Without him, you got a hard path. Well, I guess I know how to rough it. Well, then rough it. Okay. 
But, you know, if there's a nice, easy paved road, path that you can walk on with his blessings, why not walk in it? You don't want to get out there in the dark because you can't tell who your friends are out there. But in the light, you can. Okay? So he energizes you to give you the ability, the will and the way. And that charisma always follows that where it's the real thing. Or what do you mean the real thing? It's of God. Carries his blessings. Why? Because that Greek word, inner, inner giant help, it means to be effective, to be active, to be successful. And uh, tell me one more time who it is that works that. God does. It's God's energy that enables one to have that charisma, that gift, that enables one to accomplish those things that God would have you do. Verse 14, do all things without murmurings and disputings. You know, the way you can destroy a church is to have a bunch of deadbeat murmurs in it. Well, I wonder why they did that. You know. Well, you should ask. You know, if you always ask questions, you'll learn something. You don't ask questions, you might do a lot of wondering and that's how gossip gets started, okay? Truth in the body and makes that body uh, function properly with God's energy rather than disruptions. Fifteen, that you may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and a perverse nation among whom ye shine as lights of the world to the world. And that's what you are. You know, don't ever think that when you walk into a room as a Christian, energized, that it doesn't rub off. If you don't ever think for a minute, they can't tell because you're salting. And that salt changes the flavor and makes it palatable, whereby people can recognize the energy, not man-given, but God-given. Yeah, and some might say, well, how do I get him to do that? Isaiah 43, 26. What does Isaiah 43, 26 say? God says, hey, you got a problem? Remind me of my promises and let's sit down and talk about it. He wants you to talk to him. Okay. Well, I thought that was prayer. Well, it is. But... It's not some long written out prayer by some reverend somewhere, but it's from your heart, letting him know what your wishes are and what it is you need. You're his child, and he wants to energize you. He wants to assist you, to lead you, to direct you. All you have to do is go to him and be patient enough to wait on him Study to show yourself approved, rightly dividing the Word of God, whereby it applies in your life, as he would have you serve him with energy okay, and charisma. That's his promise. You want to get around to claiming it. You know, he has a reason for doing this for you, this generation. He does. We're going to go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 to find out why. Why would he warn us about um, supernatural entities? Why would he name us about spirits that uh, might uh, give us problems? What I want you to see, many of, most of you in this room could recite this chapter by heart, okay? But there is a point or two within it that it needs energizing that we're going to take care of, okay? because there is a lesson in it that's very important to you in this generation of the fig tree. You all remember when Paul went in his first letter to the Thessalonians, he told them about the seventh trump. They got all excited, and unfortunately a lot of people built the rapture theory into that. Bad mistake. And then Paul wrote the second letter uh, to uh, with the... And to, to help them get things back together.
but it's also to help you in these end times with that energizing, where that you know your Father. Okay, chapter 2, verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. Now I want you, what is the subject? The subject is the re return of Jesus Christ at the second advent and by our getting back together with him. That's what every Christian looks forward to. Now, exactly how is it going to be? He's going to tell you. And you either believe man or you believe the word of God. So let's go with it. Verse 2. That you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter, as from us, even if it's from Paul, don't get shook up, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Don't, don't let them see you sweat on your first cruise, okay? Sit back, relax, and absorb the truth. Okay. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. The Greek is a palier, it is Satan's name in the Greek. Okay. There is no way Christ is going to return to this earth until after the Antichrist, Satan, reveals himself, the son of perdition. Well, what does is, what is that son of perdition mean? Perdition means to perish. Okay. He's the only entity that's already sentenced, had his great white throne judgment, and is sentenced to die by name. And you can read of it yourself in Ezekiel chapter 28, verses 18 and 19. Okay. He's sentenced to death. But he's going to play this role. And there's a reason for it. And that's why you must be energized by God to know and understand this. Verse 4, Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he as God, this is Satan as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. It's going to happen, friend. What has Christ said here now? He said, hey, Paul's saying, Christ is not returning until after Satan sits in Jerusalem claiming to be Jesus Christ returned himself, playing God on the throne of God. It's not going to happen. Well, because you students of Revelation know this happens at the sixth trump. Christ doesn't return until the seventh. Okay. That's what your destiny is. You have nothing to worry about. They can't harm a hair on your head. Okay. Verse 5, remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things. When we were sitting around, I went into much detail about this. Verse 6, and now you know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. You know now that he comes first before Christ returns. You know where he's going to return to. That's Jerusalem. You know where he's going to stand. So you know how to identify him. Verse 7, for the mystery of iniquity doth already work, only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. There's that word work again, energy, his energy. Okay. Now, the verb here, only he who will let will let till he be taken out of the way, is a transitive verb in the Greek. It means that you must transfer back to verse 5, four and five to understand who it is. Well, it's Satan, okay? Well, who's, hold, who's letting Satan? Michael is, Revelation 12, seven. And Michael's going to kick him out. And that's when he comes here doing this. Listen carefully now. This gets very important to you. Eight, and then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. In other words, when Christ does return, he takes care of business, okay? Verse 9, listen carefully. Even him whose coming is after the working, this is inner jail, the very energy of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. 
That's why you must be energized by Almighty God. That's what you're going to stand against. Do you have anything to worry about? Absolutely not. Because Christ has given us power over all of our enemies, including Satan. Okay. No problem. Now, so there, uh, it's important that you note that that working, that energy comes from Satan. Okay. Verse 10. Um, after, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. All they had to do is read this chapter. Do you know what? If they just had read God's Word and read this chapter to learn the chronological order of events, well, what does that mean, brother? It means Satan comes first, okay. not Christ. Don't be deceived. Okay. Christ wants you to be a virgin when he comes spiritually, not not use property, okay, spiritually speaking. Okay, verse 11. And for this cause, now, now do what? For this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. This is what I want you to understand. What was the strong delusion? Well, it was the working of Satan, the deceiving lies. Who sent it? Who allowed it? Your heavenly Father did. So what have you got to worry about? Nothing. Because he energizes them to deceive those that have not studied his word. Unfortunately, this is the downfall of the rapture theory. Is it deceives people. It's part of that deception. God's going to allow it. It's important that you know God allows it for a reason. He has some elect that are not going to let this conquer them. They're going to stand. And with all else, they're going to put on the gospel armor and stand against the fiery darts of Satan. That's what you put the gospel armor on. You can read it in Ephesians chapter 6. When you're standing against principalities in high places, that's supernatural entities, you put the gospel armor on and in place to stand against the fiery darts of Satan, not to fly away like a butterfly, okay? It's to serve God. But the comfort is that it is God that allows the energy to enter into this false one and deceive the people that won't study, that won't love God, would be a better way to put it, that won't follow God, but will listen to the traditions of man that make void the word of God. It's pretty simple to read God's Word where it says, Hey, Paul, I want to talk to you about Christ coming back. It's not going to happen until after the Antichrist stands in Jerusalem, claiming to be God. What are you going to do about it? <clears throat> well, he just told you what you should do about it. They're going to try to deceive those people, but they cannot deceive you because you have the seal of God in your foreheads, which simply means you have this chapter embedded in your brain, that's what's in your forehead, whereby you can't be deceived because you have been energized with the truth of God's Word. And now, the verse um, 12, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Weddings out of season, better wait for the true Christ, better wait for the true wedding. Verse 13, but we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning, I repeat, from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. In other words, from the beginning means even the first earth age to God's elect, okay? 14, we're in two. He called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast. You understand that? Stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught, whether by word or by epistle, but not by the traditions of men. Okay. Well, what's truth? Truth is God's word, not man's word. Not this man or any other man. It's this word that you hold in your hand. 
Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and hath given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace, 17, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work, energy. Good word, work, and energy, and he will do that. How precious it is that our Father lets the truth ring forth, falls on this earth like water, like rain, all the way around the world, establishing his covenant with man, that he, lov he lovingly helps his children. But most of all, without that inner being energized, without being energized through his word, it's very difficult to serve him because um, you're not really in that family and you happen to be a part of that. How precious it is to be allowed to serve him, to be energized by him. All you have to do is want to help him, want to serve him. But most of all, listen to me carefully, want to help your family, God's children. They're in a hurting old world out there. They need the truth. They need it desperately. And God uses whomever he will. Heavenly Father, thank you, Father, for your precious word. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to serve you. Be with us this day as we come into this generation of the fig tree in these times that are so pathetic and come forward even with thy truth and word, expressing, Father, knowledge and wisdom from your very logos, your word, Father. We thank you in Yeshua, Jesus' precious name. Amen.